So what is Arduino? Many people think that Arduino is just Arduino boards. It's true. We do make boards. We do make some boards in collaboration with other partners, like the Arduino 101, which is a board that uh, is our new flagship for education, fast accelerometer, gyroscope, Bluetooth low energy, can be Bluetooth host, which almost nobody can, and has a neural network in it. But this actually doesn't mean anything. You know, when you approach a high school, what they want to do is to make really nice science experiments or really nice STEAM experiments in general or art projects or whatever. So you could totally cross this thing here <laughs> because people don't hear that. But in order to program these boards, you need to have some piece of software that will allow you to program stuff. And we, for now, 12 years have been offering this uh, nice IDE that is made in Java that runs in more or less every computer except for Chromebooks. So we like to say that this oh we like to say that this uh, IDE is past compatible. So if you have an old classroom with like a bunch of old computers, you can always install this thing offline. You don't need to have internet to run the class, and it was great. But we're also having a future compatible IDE that is HTML5 that is called Arduino Create, and that you can run even on Chromebooks, and uh, that will allow you to program your boards uh, both directly and over the air. On top of that, we have a whole strategy around having documentation online that is publicly available for anybody to learn by themselves about technology and is completely open. It's Creative Commons uh, 3.0, uh, so you can actually take documentation from here and make your own books. So our hardware that is there is open, our software is open, our documentation is open, and this has created a huge community of users that are very interesting in building and sharing with Arduino. I just want to throw one number so you, uh, you can get to see something very nice. Our website has over 110 million unique visitors a year. So go beat that, people. You know, when somebody wants to build something, they first go to the Arduino website, check it out, and then they make their own thing, which is very relevant. But this is not meaning uh, formal education. So here you can see what people are building with Arduino. This is our community of users from all over the world. This is a, a, a test of or teaser of a lot of things people are doing using Arduino in general. Yeah. <clears throat> of course, everybody likes to see robots uh, playing with kids uh, in every possible way. Right? Yeah. So, as I was saying, this is this is not really formal education for school. This is a lot of small projects that are being done. But Arduino Education, the department of Arduino I'm working with, is very much concerned with how to bring technology to formal education. And I say technology because, I mean, we don't only use Arduino, right? How to bring technology to classrooms all over the world in a program that will go beyond the one experiment. And this is the thing I will talk about today. Arduino is literally used at every school in the world, sorry, at every university in the world. Uh, and the thing I'm presenting today, to you today, which is CTC 101, which is the acronym for Creative Technologies in the Classroom, and 101 comes from the Arduino 101 course we're using, is trying to bring project-based education in the form of STEAM to the classrooms. We're looking at tackling the problem of how to use technology in the creative process through quick design iterations, doing a lot of interactive projects, uh, using hardware and software, and encouraging people to do group collaboration. So this is, this is not about a geek in a corner sitting alone doing something. It's about kids working together in building projects in teams and sharing them with others. Which are the challenges for this? Well, the challenges are <clears throat> that we live in a world that is anchored in the past. You know, you go around and many schools don't have internet. You go around and many schools have a bunch of really old laptops. And I'm talking by experience because we've, we've been deploying education for now several years. Uh, and people are anchoring the idea of that technology is just there for the sake of technology. So you teach kids how to make robots that are going to be doing robotic applications and not teach the kids how to use technology for their own purpose. Also, we have the problem that uh, teachers don't really have the time to educate themselves. So there's a, a lot of challenges that we have there. What we're looking at is how, how to bring collaborative learning, project-based learning in a multidisciplinary way so that people can work together and learn from one another. And this is what we call CTC 101. CTC 101, I have to mention, is kindly uh, done thanks to the help with uh, Intel, which is one of our partners in this project. 
So what you're able to see one on one is this box. It weighs about seven kilos. I cannot translate that to pounds, so somebody should help me out since we're in Britain. Uh, that includes everything that you need to run a class with 30 students from zero to the end by building projects in teams. It brings online materials, it has remote support, so you will be getting help from a team of people sitting at the other side of your screen, so when you ask questions, you can get help. And it's distributed to a network of certified partners, people that know what they're talking about throughout the world. I'm gonna jump to the next slide because it's a lot of words. So this is our educational goals. If you want to take a picture, I will come until three, so you can do it, three, two, one. Because I want to show you what is inside. This is what is inside. It's all the materials that you need, all the construction bits that you need, all the electronics that come in this box. And uh, so that you can have six simultaneous groups in your class working together. And it includes materials for a total of over 25 projects, actually 26 projects, but it looks a lot better when you say over 25, okay? Uh, the idea is that when you're working in class, Many, many times we've seen the situation where a teacher makes one experiment and the students replicate that one experiment and you have 30 students doing that one experiment. From a logistics point of view, it sounds like it's super easy, it's very smooth. Because everybody might have the same issue and you can correct the same issue all, of, all over the place. We don't like to look at creative process in that way. We like people to do different things, be allowed to think differently from one another and then share their findings with one another. I should say that, before I continue talking, that CTC has been launched in many countries already, actually three countries, but it's in, developed to run in multiple languages. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave you with this slide here, and at the end I will give you like real numbers, so you can get a real vision on how many people have been using this so far. What we do is that we put the teacher at the center, this is the key aspect of CTC. So we, we don't look at having the kid having a great experience while learning. That's gonna happen if the teacher feels confident and the teacher has a good time while teaching what he's or he or she is teaching. So we, we communicate with the teacher and we help this person to teach the class as he or she is learning. So we don't expect the teacher to stop his whole life for a year, go take a master course, and then come back and teach. You know, we want the teacher to be able to continue his professional life in a normal way, take an introduction course and then start teaching, and us teaching as they're going to to school every day, they learn a little bit more and they bring it to the kids. This works for a, for a full year. So our role here is to support the teachers as they are interacting with the students. And these are all of the resources that we have to help them out. The kit includes enough material to have up to 30 students working in a single class. We recommend to have groups of three or four students, but some schools because of the economy of the school systems, they might have to run it with more students. Each, there is enough material for each group to make a different project at each step of the process. Our process is made of five steps. So first learning about programming, then digital signals, analog signals, moving parts, robotics and so on, and the last one is about Bluetooth communication and complex sensors. And every other week we introduce a new topic and the teachers learn about this topic and then they bring it to class and they experiment with the students and so on. At each one of those blocks, the students get to make a different project. That's just the reason why we have so many different projects, because if I learn about analog technology, my brain will be different from your project, and different from this project, and so on and so forth. So, we encourage learning by making. The students, they learn in an embodied process of interacting with the technology, learning how to program, building things, it's extremely hands-on, and they get immediate feedback. This is a key aspect. I guess you all know that when you go to a class, if it takes you three months to make a robot move, the students will get desperate in the process. So we designed the process so that every class, the students have a very small success they can bring home. Today I managed to build this thing. The day after I managed to make the software for it. The day after I pitch my project to my classmates. And then I repeat, and so on. So the process happens through collaboration, but also through teaching others. You know there's a whole educational movement that is based in learning by teaching, it goes back to the 60s. So uh, we are really encouraging the teachers to have the students present their results to the others and explain how they understood things. And we don't expect this to be done just once in the class, we expect this to be done once every other week. 
So the students, they go into this loop of like, oh, I have a new idea, I make a new project, I present my project, I start a new project, and so on and so forth. That's where the iteration comes in place. I will summarize this whole thing for you. So first the teachers get some small training. This training can happen online or offline. So we have to prepare everything, you go to our website, you get the whole education, it takes about two weeks of an off uh, online course that you do at your own pace. Then you start teaching, and as you're teaching, you get help from us, both in the forum and online webinars that happen every other week. Then once you have done this iterative process of learning about different projects, you tell your students, okay people, now you make your own project. And that is where the ideation project comes in place, and brainstorming and so on. And you start building your own project, and you work with that for about eight weeks. And then you present your results in a technology fair. I'm gonna show you each one of these steps with video now, so that you can see how things work. First of all, what happens with the interaction between the learning activities? People have an online web, uh, online service. I was gonna say an online website, which actually sounds pretty bad. Uh, where well, you have all the documentation included there. This is an example of a project that is for the Block 5, that is about complex sensors and Bluetooth uh, communication. And you see everything comes explained in step-by-step -step instructions with a video that shows what you can expect from the project, all the code there, explanations about the code, and a guide that guides the students in, into doing something that goes beyond the exercise. Because we want people to think outside the box, so we encourage them to go beyond what we give them. That's very important. On top of that, as I said, every other week there is a webinar where the teachers can ask complex questions that they couldn't figure out by themselves or they couldn't get answered in the forum. Here you see one of our webinars where, where Carlos is uh, explaining teachers how to program uh, small games with processing. So this is uh, about the programming part. In total, our package includes 10 different webinars for the teachers to attend that you could adjust to your own pace. So if you run this class in three months, then you can have them with less time between uh, webinars. If you run it in six months, you can have more time between webinars. We share your webinars every other week. And at the end of this whole process, you come to a, to a science fair where the teachers and the students come together and they show their results. This is an example of one of our fairs that we've been running around the world in the last years. In this case, we partnered with the Cosmo Kaiser Mission in Barcelona, and 1,200 kids came together uh, from 75 schools to present uh, 200 more or less projects. We typically show up with a camera and a microphone, and we interview them and ask them, oh, tell me, what was cool about this project? What did you learn? What did you, didn't you learn? So here you can see, I had a bit less gray hair, but uh, these are different places that the students built. <coughs> I will just uh, present you my favorites. Actually, my absolute favorite comes very soon. I'm a, I'm a book addict. I read a lot of books. So these kids are gonna show up now. They made a, a library handling system where you choose in your computer the book that you're looking for and a laser beam tells you where it's on the bookshelf. That's my absolute favorite. You know, I have a gigantic bookshelf with books ordered by color, so I have no idea where they are. <laughs> so. Um, there are more simple projects, like these people, they made a small piano. These guys, they made a, a soap, uh, soap uh, bubble blower machine. You know, we try not to limit the, the kids' creativity. So they spend some weeks trying to figure out how to solve the project they want to build. And we help them through our online platform, through support calls, and through our forum in finding out the right things. We don't, we don't solve it for them, we just give them the hints of where to find the right documentation, how to make it. I mean, you can even interacting with 15,000 students is not easy. So, yeah. I'm going to show you some demos. And uh, typically, I would just sit, stand here and assemble everything, but when I came, I realized how small the booth was, I realized I couldn't do it. I've been at a table and a whole lot of other stuff, and uh, so I prepared everything on video. Uh, I'm going to show you one of our uh, funniest projects called Binary LP. As I said, there is 26 construction projects in this. The students that will not make the 26, it will take them probably uh, four full years of class to make all the, all the 26 projects. So uh, uh, this project, what you can expect to do is to build a small, small uh, uh, long play player where you can draw yourself the music you want to listen. And what you learn here is how to count in binary. So with these three lines, you can write different notes uh, where the black 
signify is the one and the white signify the zero. And what we have here is a line following sensor that is typically used for robots that follow a line. So we are actually disrupting the idea on how to use sensors used for robotics into do something else, which is very important for us. And uh, when you use it, well, first thing, you need to build it. The whole building process is calculated to take about 45 minutes. Here we speed it up to one and a half minutes. But the idea is that each one of the construction blocks, each one of the programming events in this course, are programmed to last uh, exactly uh, one class. And one class nowadays, they last about 45 minutes. So after building it, the basic thing you can do is this. So you can write your own song. If you are Mexican, you will be listening to a funny song. Since you are not Mexican, I think, then you don't recognize it. It's OK. Uh, but then, as I said, the Arduino 101 board has extra features that all the other boards don't have, which is, for example, Bluetooth Low Energy. So you can actually push it a bit further and include an application and communicate to this toy through Bluetooth. This is actually for the kids that want to go beyond the normal level. And then you can play with it from the phone. I know it's cool. I also like it. I actually programmed the application for you people. So if you get it, it comes in the package. Uh, I want to show you another example, which is more, it's a bit closer to uh, the classic robotics experiments. You know, make a robot that you can remotely control from a mobile phone. You know, it's a, it's a classic one. This is a classic example where you connect software and hardware, you use the sensors on the board, and you learn a bit about other things. Here's how you build it. I think um, the computer is not catching up. In my screen, it goes a lot faster. OK, now. And once you have it, you can interact with it. So the idea behind this project is, again, play around with uh, wireless communication, learn about how you use Bluetooth in code, how you receive commands, and how you execute actions based on those commands. It's, again, this is just one of the 26 examples that come in the kit. So as I told you earlier, we've been trying this thing with a lot of people. And you will say, with how many people? Well, we try this out at 536 schools exactly right now. On the 17th of February, if you happen to be in Barcelona, we will make another science fair like the one you saw in the video. At Cosmo Caixa, it's a Friday. So you're more than welcome to come and see what the students are bringing this time. We've been working with 15,000 students. We documented over 1,000 projects. We have had 10 science fairs. And I think this is the most relevant part. Because I didn't really, really go in, went into the, the aspect of like, in my opinion, technology teachers should know how to deal with digital technology. And this means, in the long run, to learn in a way or another how to program. Well, 69% of the teachers that use our system and allow, they learn how to program while they were interacting with the system. So they didn't know how to program before they started, which is uh, very interesting to know. And uh, uh, you can see the satisfaction index that we have uh, measured. More or less everybody are very satisfied. And you will say, and this is say speech people, can you get this now? Of course you can. So you can just go to the Arduino website and purchase it today. And if you want to see more details about it, <clears throat> you can both visit the Intel booth or partner in our own booth to get to find more about it. So thank you very much, and I'll open the floor for questions. Any questions? If you bought the kit and you had um, in the technology department, say like a CNC router, could you make some more kind of devices to go with your Arduino? So, so the question is whether it's expandable. Yeah. Yeah, no. totally. These are completely standard parts in our Arduino catalog. The only things that are 
be special are the laser cut pieces and the, the line following sensor because that didn't exist in the market and we designed it specifically for this. But every single part in this kit is completely standard parts you can buy already now. So if let's say you wanted to have seven groups instead of six, you could buy the missing parts and add them to the kit and continue to work with it. Yeah. Do you have a hands-on experience here at PET so you can fit over and try some of the projects? Yeah, yeah we have uh, I think eight or seven projects down at our booth. You can totally go there and, and try them out. Yeah. Hello. Uh, what's the mobile app already built or can you modify the mobile app by, by students? Yeah. Well, the mobile apps, they, they are made in Android, the ones you saw here, but they are, they are open source, so you can just get them and, and change them. Yeah. Might be a bit obvious, but um, they're all very, they're very reusable. So once you, they make the project, break it up and then reuse it for someone else's. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, the idea is that because we try to put push the price down, uh, so we, we started working with this project with foundations that were saying, look, the problem we have is that we don't have 10,000 euros to spend in every school. So so uh, we looked at re reusability of everything that you mount, you can easily dismount. And also uh, the idea that every group makes a different thing that also allows you to continue the education further if you want to and you might be considering like okay I use the first block for over six months and I expand my education for two years for example uh, because you can just get the, the kids to circulate among the kids so it's, it's expandable in the both directions time and space kind of thing <laughs> okay if there is no more questions I will encourage you to visit our booth thank you very much and I will see you in the future thank you